Welcome to this brief look at flipped learning. My name is Nancy Nelson, and I'm a long-term educator, and I've been using flipped learning in my classroom for at least 10 years now. Let's take a look at what flipped learning is, first of all. So if I asked you what you thought flipped learning is, what would you say? A lot of people respond and say, well, it's taking my lecture and turning it into video. So I'd have a 50 minute class, I make a 50 minute, minute video, I post it for my students and we're good to go. And others will say it's got to do with where and when we do things. So by flipping, we are allowing students more flexibility in where they're able to do their work and when they want to be able to do it. And it, it frees up some time for us as well. But neither of those are really accurate representations of what flipped learning is. What it really is, is has two parts. The first is taking the direct, direct instruction or that transmission of content from a shared space into an individual space. And then it's using that shared space or class time for a dynamic and interactive learning environment where the students are really engaged in what they're learning. The nice thing about flipped learning is it works in person, it works in remote delivery, and it works in blended or hybrid offerings as well. So let's look at that direct instruction first, where we're taking the, the lecture and moving it into an individual space. And what we're going to use in order to accomplish this are things like videos. So we can make a series of short videos that cover the foundational knowledge of some new content. We can direct students to some readings, maybe in a textbook or maybe online. We can, can have the students do some online research or direct them to some specific um, sites online that are related to what we're talking about. And we can even have them work through a few simple problems related to what we're talking about. The nice thing about this is the reusability. So the students can access that information as often as they need to. Then if we think about the group space, that dynamic interactive environment, what we can do now is take that time to really help the students focus in on what's important about those concepts. We give them an opportunity to apply them. We have them work together to support each other's learning, to answer each other's questions. And if they can't figure it out, to come to us as a group and say, you know, we really don't get this piece. Can you help us? All of these together really add value to that learning process for students. So we're more likely to see them come to class. There are a couple of different flip learning modules or models. The first one is called PAC, and it's got three phases, the first of which is preparation. So this is done outside of class time, and this is making use of those resources before. So it's getting students ready to come into that interactive dynamic learning environment. That phase is called the application or apply phase. So this is where our students are working together to solve problems, to talk about those new ideas, and to really get a good, deep understanding of them. And then finally, a confirmation phase where students will on their own, pull together those ideas. So it might be some homework, it might be a video that we've prepared that helps them integrate that and really identifies what was important in this particular class. The other model has one extra phase, uh, and that first phase is called exploration or explore. And this is in class time, so maybe it's the last half hour before you're introducing a new concept. And what we're going to do here is really pique the student's interest, get them uh, thinking about this new topic and why it's important. Then we go into an explain phase, which is like the preparation. Then we go into the apply and confirmation phase. So let's take a closer look at those stages. So the, the exploration stage, as I mentioned, is really trying to get the students interested. We want to hook them in. We want to really get them thinking about this content. Th this content. And the best way to do that is to provide context. So let them know why this is important to them as they move forward toward their career. The second part, the explain, is where we're going to use those resources we talked about before. 
So a series of short videos that explain the foundational skills. Now notice I said short. Videos like this should be five to 10 minutes long. Uh, that's about the attention span for learners. And we wanna make sure that they're paying attention during that time. We direct them to some textbook readings, web resources, and have them do a little bit of work. In that application phase, now we're into that focusing piece. We're really bringing the student's attention to the key aspects of what they're to learn. We're choosing problems for them to work on that really bring home those key ideas, and we're allowing them the chance to talk about it and actually do it in a safe, supportive environment. And through that comes some valuable learning. And then finally, we want to pull it all back together in that confirmation stage. Might be that pull together video, might be some traditional homework where they get more practice doing things, or it might be, I'd like you to go out and find a few more resources about this particular topic. As we close off this, this video, I want to give you a way to remember what flipped learning is all about. And so we're going to use the word flip. So the F stands for a flexible environment. It provides the student with some flexibility and choice. So that flexibility might be when and where they watch or do that asynchronous piece. Uh, and then also flexibility in the classroom where we can adapt what we're working on if we sense the students are struggling with a particular part of that, that new knowledge. The L stands for learning culture. And this is where we're moving from thinking about teaching to thinking about learning. We want the students to be front and center in this process. The I is for intentional content. That intentionality comes both in the preparation of the explanation or the exploring piece. What is it that we need the students to do before they come into our interactive classroom? And then particularly once we're in that, that dynamic interactive piece, what is the best way for us to get the students to really understand that new content. And then finally, a professional educator. So for us, it's growth in how we're, we're working with the students instead of delivering to the students. We're thinking about them as the center of this process, and that's going to allow us a little bit more freedom and flexibility as educators to help support that learning.